welcome to the Tatiana show. I miss you guys. I'm so sorry I haven't dropped a show on the internet in a while. It's because I've been busy. And in case you guys do not know, the Tatiana show is now available on the premium network Comcast channel 198. So if you have Comcast cable or you know someone else that have Comcast cable, go check out the Tatiana show on channel 198. It's a great show. It airs all week long at 7 and 8 o'clock. And you know, sometimes it might be airing earlier than that. So just be on the lookout and go flip through the channels. You ain't, you ain't got nothing else to do. But anyways, don't go anywhere because I still have a great show ahead for you guys that you guys don't want to miss. You're watching the Tatiana show. Don't forget to tune in to the Tatiana Show, November 7th. I like this from people who move on the edge. Man, you have future plans that you know you're going to Welcome to the Tatiana Show. And uh, I know I've been on a little hi hiatus. Because, you know, like I told you guys in the introduction, I've been working on a show that's now on TV. So you guys have to check that out on the Comcast channel 198 on the premium network. So if you have Comcast cable, support your girl and watch the show. It's so good. It's a different scenery. It's a whole different thing going on, but it's still the same old Tatiana. So you're still getting good TV, just in a different, you know, vibe. And all this is going to work well. And also, this episode, I ran out of no cards, you guys. I got to go to Walmart and re-up. So, I'm running on one no card for several stories. And usually, you know, I use, you know, several no cards because I got several stories. And I like to keep up uh, with key points and reminders to, you know, talk about certain things. And don't forget certain parts of the story so you guys can know all of the juicy details. But I just couldn't find any more. If, if I have some, they hiding from me. But as of now, I don't know. I don't, just have this one note card. By the grace of God, I got this one. So, uh, yeah. This episode, I'm kind of freestyling with these stories because uh, I could only put so much information. I didn't. I even had to use the back. <laughs> you know? So, bear with me on this episode as we use one note card to talk about all this crazy stuff that's going on in the world. But like always, we start things off with sports. And um, back in 2014, uh, sports reporter Craig Sager was diagnosed. Well, he told us, he, he told the world that he was diagnosed with leukemia. Well, now it's back. And he told us in an HBO interview that the doctor told him that he had three to six months to live. My heart and my prayers go out to Sager and his whole family and everyone that is that has been affected by this diagnosis because three to six months is such a little time. But don't worry, they did not put the jippity uppity vibe crazy attire wearing reporter down because he says that he would not, you know, just stand by and believe that he's going to have three to six months to live. He's going to, you know, look long term and pray that he be one of the people that can live to five years. But I pray that the Lord bless his heart, bless his body, bless his mind, bless his soul, that he lives beyond five years. He go on to, you know, take on ten more years and still out there reporting the games in his wacky suits and doing his thing because... Doctors are humans, just like us, and you know they're just going by what the you know the the reports show them. But I pray that the reports get turned around and he live a lot longer than three to six months. But as of now, that is what he has been told. So everyone who is a is a fan of Sagar, pray for him, keep him in your prayers. You know, just pray the best for his family as they go through these hard times right now. But uh, speaking of sports, you know, former NFL player Darren Sharper, you know, he was, he has been guilty of drugging and raping women. Now, that's somebody who have actually done his crime, and it's ended up here talking about Bill Cosby, but this young man actually, you know, pleading guilty for raping and drugging women. And I don't even understand why, because you are an attractive, young football player. You think these women won't have sex with you for free? Why you gotta drug them? But maybe it's some sick, twisted fantasy that
that he has. But yeah, so he is playing guilty to that. But let me tell you how the story goes. So, you know, his case is is um in the course of New Orleans. Good luck to that. But at first he was sentenced to nine years. But now they have some they changed his plea deal and you know things getting all twisted up and curved around and now he's looking at twenty years. I'm like, wow, you go from nine to twenty years? <laughs> what? <laughs> but he, I'm not laughing at the situation. I'm laughing at the fact that, you know, nine years to twenty years, what kind of plea deal y'all working? Like, what you supposed to be talking about when doing plea deals, you're supposed to be trying to go down to five years. Five years in, like, probation. Or maybe three years in, like, community service. I don't know. I've never been to court to know that stuff, like, forbid them. But either way it goes that he's looking at 20 years now. And um, he's next. Well, we don't know as of yet if he officially will get 20 years. He will be back in court on June 16th. Where that's when we will find out if he will be sentenced to 20 years. I pray that he pray while he got these little months of freedom about his situation. Because 20 years is a long time. But he did do the crime and he's even pleading guilty to it. So that means that he knows that he drugged and raped those women. He can't even deny it. But he said that it did it up to at least 9 women. So 9 women have been affected by this. And... I pray the best for him, you know. And that's so crazy that to be young, good looking, and successful, but you feel the need to drug and rape women. Like, stay away from me. Devil, I have a built you. Devil, get up off me. Like, that's crazy. But uh, I pray the best for him and um, in his situation. And we're going to find out June 16th what's going to happen. And is he going to get his 20 years or is he going to, you know, Try to get shorter than 20. I hope the boy at least get like 10 or maybe 12. But 20? The world will be so different by the time he get out of jail. I don't even know what to say. But speaking of drugs, a flight attendant at LAX got caught trying to smuggle in 70 pounds of cocaine, y'all. 70 pounds. That's a lot of drugs. And what's so crazy is like, you are a flight attendant. Like, they going to find you and bring you to jail. <laughs> I don't know what happened, and I don't know what possessed her mind to do it, but this is how the story goes. So she was going through the airport, checking, you know, going through, trying to get on the flight, and they did a random search, and it picked her. That's so crazy how they just was like, let's call out her. But they called her out, and they said that they noticed how she was a bit nervous, you know, when going through the the little security check. And they say, no, she ran for it. They said she dropped her drugs. She took off her Gucci shoes. Yes, I get some drugs paying well. But she, you know, took off them Gucci shoes, and she ran for it, and she got out of the airport. And that's when they found the carrier. They found the bag, and they saw the 70 pounds of cocaine inside her bag like 70 pounds but she uh works for the JetBlue flight um company and they have not released a statement of just yet about the situation but i would love to hear what they're gonna say they're probably gonna say lock her up like come on she's a flight attendant smuggling drugs we can't trust her but at the same time the people who gave her the drugs I want, if she, if she call you, don't answer because she's about to be an uh, informative. This girl got caught with 70 pounds of cocaine. You think she ain't snitching? She telling on you, you, your mama, where you live that. You know, even if you, you know, serve, it's like that she served you one time. She gonna snitch on you too. Like this girl about to just go crazy in the, in the um, holy cell when they do her integration. But all I can say is I don't know what possessed her mind to just smuggle in that much amount of drugs in an airport. But they say that this has not been her first time. So I guess she kind of got comfortable with it and felt like, oh, I got this. I know how this works. I'm a flight attendant. You know, I, this ain't nothing. But, hmm. Uh -huh. You know, like they say, what you do in the dark always comes to the light. And sure enough, it did. But uh, I pray the best for the young lady. And uh, I pray that, you know, she get her a nice plea bargain. Because she would definitely need one. 70 pounds of cocaine is a lot of charges. Well, no, time. It's a lot of time. <laughs> but uh, we're going to see what happens. 
But uh, speaking of airports, my heart and prayers go out to everyone of Brussels who was affected by the terrorist attack that happened in the airport on Tuesday morning. I am so sorry that there are people in the world that just feel the need to attack people to get their ver to get their voice heard. And uh I'm so sorry for all the innocent people who was affected by the hate that they have toward the government. And those people have nothing to do with the decisions that the governments are making. But I just wish the best for everyone. For the whole city of Brussels. For the whole country. For Europe. For America. For everyone who, you know, are victims of terrorist attacks. Uh, I pray that, you know... I don't know that they find they find these people and they lock them up and you know you might go find them and lock them up but it's gonna be some more people that's gonna rise up and feel the need but you know we just need to pray this world just need prayer and they just it's really hate that's inside their hearts and that you know you gotta just get that hate out of their heart well you know pray that they get the hate out of their heart and that's really gonna stop terrorist attacks but I, when I was reading up on the story, different news outlets was telling me, you know, first there were 30 people reported dead. And some of them say 34 people reported dead. And some say 100 injured. Some say 200 injured. So I'm just going to give a rough estimate to say up to 30 people so far has been reported dead. And in between 100 to 200 people have been reported injured. But I pray that everyone just recover and the city just finds some light and they pushed through this hard time and it just really moved on um it was reported that it was three bombs that was supposed to you know go off but only two it was one by the starbucks that took that went off in the airport and then it was another bomb on the subway that went off on the subway that's near the airport but um this world is crazy but my heart and prayers go out to everyone and i pray that these people seek help because I don't understand how they think that bombing up people is going to solve their problems. It's like, okay, you're mad at a group of people because they're not giving you what they want. So you're going to affect other people that have nothing to do with what you want. And at the same time, you're mad at these people, but now you're going to blow up these people and making these people mad at you. So how is the situation getting solved if everybody's mad at everybody? But, you know, most terrorist people, they try to, you know, get fear in people to be like, oh, let's listen because I'm scared of him. Y'all crazy. Just like Hillary, Hillary made her comments about the situation. And she said, we would not be intimidated by these attacks. And I said, that's right, Hillary. Don't let them feel like they're winning. Don't let ISIS or all, all, all these other terrorist groups think, oh, yeah, if they blow us up, we're going to submissive down in them no that ain't how it work out here y'all better go on somewhere if you can make a bomb you think we can't make a bomb i'm not you know supporting violence none whatsoever but i'm just saying you trying to intimidate someone and trying to put fear in someone to control them is not the way it works it's not happening it's not going down like that that's all i can say but uh speaking of hillary and all this stuff that's going on politics side uh I want to give a congratulations to Bernie Sanders for winning Idaho and Utah Democratic Caucus. Congratulations, because so far, Hillary been knocking you out the ballpark. No offense to all, Bernie. You know, I think you're a great man, and, you know, you really stand for the people. I'm just being realistic on numbers. <laughs> and also, I want to give a congratulations to Ted Cruz, because he also won Utah Republican Kakashi. So, congratulations on that, because Trump has been beating you guys. And that's crazy, because Trump is saying some crazy stuff, and I feel like, why he not arrested? This man is, like, threatening people and stuff, but that's a whole different argument. But either way it goes, I'm not endorsing none of these candidates. I'm just giving them a congratulations because so far the opponents have been beating them. But, uh, yeah, he may, Bernie may have won those two states, but that didn't stop Hillary because Hillary still won Arizona. So congratulations, Hillary. And Trump also won Arizona. So this is an interesting election issue. Very interesting. But I want to know from you guys, who do you all think is going to win this year's presidential uh, 
campaign. Like, who do you think is going to win? Who's going to be our next 2016 president? I want to know from y'all because I got my viewpoints, but I want to know y'all viewpoints because this is crazy. <laughs> but, um, speaking of crazy, we all know Chipotle has been in the news lately for, you know, the virus scare about the about the you know store and all that stuff e, e, e. coli and stuff but now they're back in the news again and this time is not for viruses or sickness it's because they hire sick people <laughs> and uh, what is it woodland hills california chipotle a young lady is suing them on the account of let me read it because it's several uh, uh sexual harassment assault uh, termination, discrimination, and retaliation. <laughs> That's a lot of Asians. <laughs> but either way it goes, she's suing them on the ground because she said four managers have been sexually assaulting her. And she is suing the company because of all of these things. And all I can say is, girl, if all those allegations come out true, you will have you a nice lawsuit check. Mm-hmm. But the story says that that the managers have uh, been very disrespectful. They gave her a shirt, one size, like actually a couple of sizes, too small. And when she asked for a larger shirt, his response was, "Oh, are your boobs too big?" <laughs> oh, the toilet man. Yeah, they are. Now give me a bigger size. Shoot, I ain't playing with you. But either way it goes, that there's been um she said that it has been a lot of. Uh, thing that's been going on in the Chipotle, and she is not the only girl that they have attacked. They have attacked another employee, and she also said that they sometimes use the cameras in the store to spy on customers that they find attractive. That's creepy. But the young lady name is uh, Ariana Casadina. So I pray, Ariana, that you get you a good lawyer, you get your evidence together, and you get your witnesses together, and when you take them to court, you let them know you ain't playing no games because what they done to you was wrong. And that is wrong. If somebody asks you a bigger shirt, it, should, it, don't, it don't matter. If she want a bigger shirt, just get a girl a bigger shirt. But that's because their mind was just, you know, being disgusting men. But anyway, that's all the information I have today on the Tatiana Show. Thank you guys for watching. And I promise I will not go in another hiatus like that again. Thank you so much. Mwah. <laughs>